Okay. Got to do Kedushin. Hello. Kedushin. Mem here with Beis. Okay, we're going to start the two dots on Mem 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 Base. Take a moment just to get back to where we were yesterday. Okay, Mem two dots. Viscachula dasovio. You have a katana minor. She's married. Kedushin with her father's consent. So it's a kedushin do raisa. Kedushin do raisa. Volach avil lemedina sayam, and the father goes overseas. And while he's away, she marries without the father's awareness, and she marries. Chupa. Under normal circumstances, a minor, just as the father, she's in the jurisdiction of the father for Kedushin, to take it to the next level, to be fully married, also she's still considered in his jurisdiction. So to be released from his jurisdiction, he has to consent. Here she agreed to the first stage, but he's not here for the second. He's not opposing it. And the question is, if he would know what's going on, would he endorse it? Would he allow it? Would he not allow it? That's the question. Vomnisis, she went and she married, full marriage. Omarav Ocheles Bichuma, and she was not a Bas Kohen. She married a Kohen. Only an Asius Kohen who's fully married to the Kohen is permitted to eat Truma. Is she permitted to eat Truma? Omarav Ocheles Bichuma, Achiyavo Ovia Vyibche. She's permitted to eat Truma. Until a, fa if, until a father returns and protests the marriage. If he comes and he goes, he protests it, and he's against it, then she's not permitted. But until that point, the presumption, on, on the presumption that he would allow it. Because since initially he agreed to Kedushin, he married his daughter, of, which is a Torah marriage, for Kedushin, the presumption is he would agree to take it to the next level. I, why did the daughter marry without him, his consent? Because he wasn't here. If he would have been here, she definitely would have asked for his approval. But he's not here, therefore, she eats, she's permitted to eat Shuma. Ravasi Omar, Ravasi says, Enocheles. She's not permitted to eat. Why? Shemi Yavov Yav Yimche. What if the father comes and he protests? He disapproves of the marriage. So that means retroactively, the Chuppah was not a valid Chuppah. So, when speaking, she's a Arusa eating Shuma. So, an Arusa eating Shuma on a Torah level, she's permitted. It's a rabbinic prohibition. So we're going to see in a moment, the only reason why Rav allows it is only because the prohibition is only, is only an issue of It's only forbidden on a rabbinic level. So therefore, at worst, even if it should turn out that, she wa that the father was opposed to it, at worst, at what level did she violate? Eating truma, R rabbinically. Therefore, the presumption is, we go after presumption, that since he endorsed the marriage, he agreed to the Kedushin, he probably would agree to the Nesuin, to the Chuppah. Therefore, we allow us, even if he should come and protest, retroactively, she did not violate eating Truma on the Torah level. Okay? That's firstly. Of course she needs to get She's this, this is a bona fide Kedushin. The father married her off. The father was Makadashir. Kedushin was... He didn't, he didn't object. Not yet. We don't know. He's, he's overseas. She's lived without him and he comes and he, and he says he objects. She, she still needs, she needs a get. She because needs a get. Because of the Nisun or because of the Kedushin? No, because of the, because of the Kedushin. Because of the Kedushin. Kedushin, she's... Is, is, is the Nisun valid? No, it's not valid. It's what not is valid. It? What is it? Uh, the could only be Nisun for a minor if the father approves. Let's say the father, let's say the father would be, he says, I disapprove of the Schupa. So it's nothing. It means nothing. She's still in his domain for certain things. She's only released if he... If he agrees to release her, so he has to prove for the chupa. Chupa is he takes her fully into his domain as his, as his wife. No, no need for a mina. There's no mina. There's no right to kedushin. She's fully married. There's no mina over here. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. So I, we said this yesterday. She he, she will have to wait till she becomes an adult. And then she'll marry her on her own. She, it's irrelevant but what the father that wants. So therefore the chuppah is not a chuppah. 
Erickson isn't Erickson. The father married her off. He married. He, he, he agreed yeah, to. She's a married woman. She's a bona fide divorcee. A Cohen on Torah level is not permitted to marry her. Definitely. Okay? No. Until she becomes a Gadola and then he'll marry her. Because then it's, it's irrelevant what the father wants. Okay? Sure, of course it applies. Why are we allowing the Truma? Because the presumption is the father approves. As he approved for the Kedushin, the probably he approved it in the suing. So if that's the case, she's a fully married woman, a fully married woman is permitted the Truma, which is married to a Kohen. Ravasi is concerned what happens if he comes back and he protests what happened. So what happened retroactively, the Nisun was never in the Nisun. So that means a wo woman who's uh, only in Arusa is eating Truma. She's not permitted. The Nisun is in the Nisun because they need a divorce. The divorce is for the, for the uh, Arisen. So what, but she's not permitted to eat Truma. The whole the discussion is she permitted to eat Truma. Is she not? Arisen would not permit to eat Truma. You need the suin. You need chuppah to eat truma. Yeah, we discussed yesterday. The father is away. The wife is concerned that she bring the truma to his house. That's not a concern anymore. So even with the rabbanu situation, but that's that's a loop. But that's a loop fluke. Yeah. Okay, let's go further. V'nimtzis zoro chelas truma lemafreya. So Ravasi says, if actually the father protests, that that means she was never f fully married. So rabbinically, so that's what Tosa says. Nimtzis zoro, a non kohenis. The, she's not the wife of a Kohen. She's eating Truma retroactively <coughs> because the marriage, the Chuppah is annulled. Because it reveals the Chuppah was never a Chuppah. Okay? So that's the Machlok Zerava Ravasi. Have So there was. At worst, there's Drab on it. So that's because we'll see. So we'll see in a moment. According to Rav, the only reason why we go after presumption here, we're not concerned, because at worst, it's a Drab on it. Because the Gemara is going to discuss the case. What happens? She dies. The father still overseas, and she dies, and she's fully married. She went to the chuppah, so Rav says she's permitted to eat truma. What if she dies now? Does normally a, a husband inherits a wife, right? But for inheritance, she has to be fully married to him. According to Rav, there are other relatives, and there's the husband. Who inherits her? The husband or the other relatives? Rav will see in a moment says the, the husband is not an inheritor. Why? Because on a Torah level, right? Truma, which is purely rabbinical, the provision, we could, it's sufficient to go after presumption in this case. But in terms of money, we go after Chazoka. Who's, in whose domain was the money considered? In the domain of what? Of the, of, of, of the woman, not her husband's domain. He wasn't yet an heir. But when the husband comes back, the, the father, father comes, comes back. Right? Everybody agrees if he protested, there's not a question. The marriage is retroactively annulled. No, but let's say he said that was a, that was a favor. She said yeah. something else. That's something else. He says he was a favor. Then, then, then it's not Lemafreya. But we're talking about the husband. The father's not here. She dies. The husband's not here. Who, who, who's considered in possession of the money? The, fam the family. Not her. We'll see in a moment. But if you're going after presumption, so why don't we say that he's the Muzik? Right? He's the Muzik. He's in possession. The answer is because we're only saying presumption on a rabbinical level, not on a Torah level. And we're talking about she predeceases the husband. I'm talking about what if the father, father died and he just went and married his fiance? Okay. So we still don't know. Still don't know. We still don't know. We still don't know. No, she's a married woman because of the condition the father had married. She's definitely a married woman. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to be a definitely a married woman. She has to become an adult. She has to become an adult because you don't know what the father. What if he protested? We don't know if he would have protested or not. Yes, yes, yes. They have, they have to give it back to him. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Havi uvdov choshlo rav lohor de ravasi. There was an incident. Rav took Ravasi's position. Rav says she's permitted the truma. Rav ruled as Ravasi, even though Rav is the more lean position. He took Ravasi's more stringent position into consideration and said she's not permitted the truma. But that was his chumrah. That's a chumrah. So Tosis cites the Gemara Megillah, similarly to what? 
Reading the Megill on your dollar, do you need a minion? Don't you need a minion? Rav says you don't need a minion. Ravasi says you do need a minion on your dollar. So the Gemara says that Rav, when he read the Megill on your dollar, he took Ravasi's position into consideration that he only read it within the context of a minion. Similar, similar to this. It's a Chumra. It's a Chumra. No, it defer, if the father definitely opposed this, no, no, I'm they're considered living in sin. No, so that's that's what we're saying over here. Of course, the presumption is the father would agree. That no, no, there is a presumption. The presumption is the father, would, as he, as he married or off willingly, he would be agreeable to the, the chuppah. On a rabbinic on a rabbinic level, only on a rabbinic level, and since the prohibition truma is only rabbinical unless you're fully married, the presumption is sufficient for that. That's rav. Father's not here. He's not here. We don't know what the father would have said. So Rav says a presumption the father would have approved. If he approved for the mat in the Kedushan, he probably would have pr pr approved for the Nesuin, for the Chuppah. That's Rav. That has nothing to do with this. Omer Rav Shmuel, bar Rav Yitzchok, umode Rav Shem Meso. He says, Rav Shem says, Rav would concur, would agree, if she should die, predeceased the husband as a minor, after Chuppah. A husband only inherits a wife only after the marriage is fully consummated. That he takes her as a full wife. So if she should predecease him, Enu Yorsha. He doesn't inherit her. Uki Mamonum Cheskis Morek. Yeah? Of course, you establish the money in the domain of the what? Of the one who's definitely the owner. So we have a question. Is he the heir or he's not the heir? Until he became the heir, he wasn't the heir. So whenever you're in doubt, you go after presu presumed status and you leave it in the domain, in the previous domain. So therefore it remains the domain of her family and the husband does not inherit. So via Tosis, we take a look in Rashi. No, it's not a proof. He's just saying a fact. It's not a proof. It's a fact. Moder Rav, Avgab Gabi Truma, Chaskimil, Lab Chazoko, Shinisratza Bechupa. It seems to be a contradiction. Truma, we're allowing a teat. And we see her as a full wife. But yet when it comes to inheritance, what, why? He says, even if he was the father was opposed, the reason why we allow it to eat truma, midoraiso. Ochla midoraiso. Because on a Torah level, she's permitted to eat truma, even as the Russo. The Russo cheles bitruma dvar Torah. Avalin in Russo, but on the Torah level to be an heir, the bino sheiro, meaning they have to have physical contact, which is only if it's a full wife. Moda de ene eloko orus. He's only an orus. An orus, a man who's only partially married to the woman, the mesa in Yorsha, on a Torah level, he's not an heir. The cave in the Mesavklon, so since it's a, a true bona fide suffix, in Misratza Bechupalo, we don't know if the father approved for this chup or not, who came to Mamona Becheskis Mori, as though that we established the money remains in its original domain. The domain is the domain of what? Of her family. Therefore, the husband does not inherit. And Tosas learns exactly like Rashi. Well, The presumption is that he's married her, fully married. So once she's fully married, he inherits. I mean, it's it's a good question. It's a good, but let, let me establish it. There's a famous word. There's a famous word. There's a famous word. There's a famous mitzvah um, Gemara says that um, that when it comes to Maisa Behemu, you know, you have a flock, ten sheep, ten cows, whatever it is, you have to tie it to the flock. It's Maisa. What about if it's a case where yet one of the animals may be a trefer? Right? 
a, a trafer jumped into the group, and now when you count, a trafer is not qualified to. De definitely tra One of them is definitely trafer. So now when you count ten, so when you count ten, it may be really nine, because the one that's a trafer doesn't qualify to be counted. So the halach is, it's not, it, you cannot, you, you cannot take mice from that herd, because this is asiri vadi v'lo asiri sofik. When you take mice, it has to be definitely the tenth. It can't be a question. It can't be question whether it's the tenth or not, because one of the ten you counted may not be the one which is qualified to be counted. Okay, so the midrash is going to ask a question: Why are we permitted to drink milk? Maybe the cow has a perforated stomach, or maybe it has some other physical defect which would render it a trefo, and the milk of a trefo you're not permitted to drink. So the Mar says in Bechoros, because rope rope famous kshiros. <laughs> The majority of animals are kosher. Therefore, that's the reason why you're permitted to drink milk. Because rove rules you're permitted. Now, there's a, there's a Gemara in Bav Mitzia, a famous Gemara, in the first parak. The first parak you didn't learn, did you? It says that if a person went, was counting the animals, and he already counted, and now one of the ones that already were counted jumps back into the, into the group. It's called Kofetz Echud Min Aminuyim. So the Halach is... This whole herd, you can have 10,000 animals, can no longer be counted for miser. Why? Because an animal that already was counted cannot be counted again. So now, do you know, now when you're going to count 10, it may be 9, because one of the, the 10 that you're counting may be that one that jumped back into the group. Yeah? So, so Tosis has a question. It's a mission. They're all put in a miser. Tosis has one to say, Bittel You have 10,000 to 1. Let that one be bought to. So Tosas answers, it's a drab on him. On a Torah level, you do say bitl barov, but since it's balichayim chashiv v'lo b'teli, since it's a living species, it has a certain <coughs> identity, rabbinically it's not bought to. But on a Torah level, you, can, you, you can't take miser. Rabbinically, you don't. That's Tosas' answer. Okay? So there's a famous rush, which is, which the Shittim Kobetz is above Mitzvah brings. The rush says, because since factually, it's a, it's a suffix, and what Torah says a siri vaday, it has to be definite. It's not a halacha question. Here, rov is a halacha. Torah says factually it has to be definitely the tenth, and since factually it's a question, it may not be the tenth, because one of them was counted. Rov is not sufficient. That's that's the rush. Wait, wait, listen, digest it. You know you haven't digested it yet. The food is still in your mouth, and you're talking about the second portion. Okay, let's digest it. Here, rov is a halacha. When the Torah says, when you take the tenth, factually it has to be the tenth. How do you know it's the tenth? It may not be the tenth. Well, rov says it. Rov is a, is, a, is, a, is a halacha. It's not a reality. The halacha dictates it. But when it comes to taking miser, it has to be a reality. That's, that's the rush. So there's no argument. The rush is a drabonon or a doraisa. So according to the rush, the doraisa, the herd is absolved from taking miser. That's the rush. So the Mithras has a question. Why are we permitted to drink milk? Because you go after rove. So if that's the case, every animal, if, if any of the animals are trephus, they're, they're, exempt, they're exempt from, from miser. So how do you ever take miser? How do you know the animal's not a trefa? The answer is you go after rove. So if you go after rove, so the haloch is dictating the reality. So you should never be, uh, you should never be able to take miser. That's the Mithras question. Harvey, you had a question? David, you, you swallowed it. Okay. Okay, you digested it. Okay. So the Mitzchus says, uh, has, says a principle which the Haflo in Ksuba says the same principle. Says the same principle. He says that once, I'll give you an example. Um, the Rambam, it's famous Rambam. The Rambam, we say, Erechod Nem Bisurim. That a single witness is, is believed regarding to say some, whether something's kosher or not kosher. If you have a piece of meat, you want to know is it kosher or not kosher? A Jew says it's kosher, you have a right to, to, on to, you have a right to rely on the single witness. It could be a man, it could be a woman. That testimony is 100% reliable. And you're permitted to eat the meat. What happens if a person ate meat and then afterwards, after eating it, and he was forewarned not to eat the meat. 
And then Eid Echot comes and says, after he ate it, it was Nevelo. Do you believe him? You don't believe him. You don't believe the Eid Echot. Of course not. Right? To punish somebody, you have to have two witnesses. Right? He's not believed to say it was Nevelo. Because now, after fact, what relevance does his testimony have? To punish the man. For punishment, the single witness is not believed. Okay? So let's talk a case. What happens to Eid Echot comes and says, the meat is Nevelo. And now, after he tests his nevela, somebody is about to eat the meat. Two witnesses say, you better not eat the meat. And if you eat it, you're going to receive malchus. And he eats the meat. He receives malchus. So they ask him the Rambam. So what is the basis for him receiving malchus? The, the original testimony of the single witness. Right? So, but we say a single witness testimony cannot bring about punishment. But over here, it's bringing about punishment. When he established that it was so what's the answer? Of course, it's established. Of course, the testimony is not for the sake of punishment. It's to establish what the reality is. So once something is established, we, it's established as fact. Therefore, what follows is irrelevant, even though it's punishment. That's the Rambam. Okay? That's the way the Nesivis learns, learns the Rambam, explains the Rambam. Over here, before the animal is going to be tithed, I want to eat the animal. Am I permitted to eat the animal? Yeah. Before it's tithed in the herd. Why? Because Rove ruled it's kosher. Am I permitted to drink its milk? Rove ruled it's kosher. So Rove is like the Eid Echot. It already established fact. Once fact is established, that's a reality. That's not called the Suffolk. The case over there in Bav Mitzvah, speaking with one of the animals that was counted, jumped back into the herd. Factually, every animal is a question. This may have been the animal that jumped back. Here, this animal is definitely not a trefer. Why? Because Rove, what? Rove is not ruling now regarding Meiser. It's not a trefer. Factually, it's not a trefer. Because I was permitted to drink its milk. If I wanted to slaughter it, I was permitted to slaughter it. As a result of that, that's not Rove ruling regarding trefer. You understand? That's the way it is. Tosa says on Torah level, you, can, you, you, you can't take against what? It's against nothing. Rove ruled. No, that, that is Vadai. Rove is Vadai. According to those, Halacha is Vadai. The Rush says no. Halacha does make something Vadai. Vadai means it has to be reality that. So we see, this is the Mithra and the Rambam, that once something is established as fact, that that's called reality. Even though initially it was based on what? It was based on Halacha. Determining that it's the, the fact. No, no, it's not to do with Tosis. Tosis says even if the rove rules directly on it, it's not a problem. So I'm getting to Lisa's question. You have Chazoka, right? Chazoka over here, how could you take the money? Chazoka. Let's say factually, right? We have Chazoka. Chazoka rules, the Chazoka says the money is in, in the domain of the what? Of the, uh, of the family. But let's say this presumption would be a real presumption that the father probably would have agreed. Would agree to the marriage, because he originally married off, he would agree to the chuppah, right? We're saying it's only because it's rabbinical. But, oh, but if on a derisive level, not. But let's say it would be a real presumption. So the real, meaning, it's, it's we've, a real presumption means it's, it's almost definite that what, that the father would have agreed to this. So that means, what is the relationship between the husband and wife? A, a, a Torah chuppah or a rabbinic chuppah? It's a Torah chuppah. That means the whole relationship is on a Torah level, the chuppah. So they're established already as husband and wife on a Torah level. Now she dies. It's not Chazokah's ruling. It's not presumption any longer ruling. Presumption already established them that they're, they're definitely married, fully married. Once they're fully married... I understand that. I understand that's what I'm saying. See, the fact is, if it's a real presumption, the father couldn't undo it. He couldn't undo it. That, that's an, a presumption says he couldn't undo it. The only reason why he couldn't undo it, because it's not a really, it's not a 100% presumption. Rabbinically, it's sufficient. But on a Torah level, it's not, the presumption is not, is not sufficient. It's not a strong enough presumption. Because if it was, how do we believe the father? Maybe he originally agreed, now he changed his mind.
Exactly. Presumption. Well, every presumption is that. Everything. Ro ro Rove is also presumption. Rove is presumption. Rove is presumption. The presumption is majority animals. How do you know? How do you know? It's impossible to make to make an evaluation. It's a presumption. I'm presuming, right? Based on my perception of reality, that's that's the presumption. Okay? It's not something you could count and determine it factually. Okay, I'm not learning Hilfus Rove no, now. It started, it started with Korm Pesach. Mark Holden starts with Korm Pesach. Right? How do you know it's a, how do you know it's a tray? It's, it's, it's valid. Maybe it's a tray for. Right. So you have Chazoka, you have Rove, whatever you have. Okay, I think we should go further here. Okay. Okay. Not in the jungle. Not yet. We're out of the jungle. Listen to this. A new case, David. New case over here. This will give you something to think over Shabbos. Okay. Niskachala das. Father marries a wolf willingly. And she goes to Chupa without the father's permission. Listen to this. And the father's here. It's not where the father's overseas. So how do you look at this? Could you imagine? I agree. Daughter to marry. I married off to this man. Question: Why? Why is he remaining silent? Is he seething? He's remaining silent, or he's remaining silent? He says he's going to go. That be the argument. Not permit to be trauma. Even this case is where the father's not over the seas. The father's is is available. He's aware of what's going on, and he was not consulted. So Rav's, Rafuna says she doesn't eat truma. Rav Yirmiyom Bar. She does eat truma. Rafuna may no cheles. Hear this? Rafuna says she does not. I feel the Rav domo cheles. Even according to Rav, says where the father's overseas, and she goes to chupa. She's permitted truma. Hosam hud loisi lav. The reason why the presumption is, since the father's not here, the father would approve. Would approve, because he's not here. So he wants his daughter. He proved that this man should be his wife's, his daughter's husband. He proves to go further. But here the father's here. So, but you're saying, we say, silence is an indication of approval. Hear this? That that he's remaining silent, he's seething. You know, he doesn't have to say anything. It's, it's a total disrespect. The, man, the father's here, and the father should be consulted. How do you marry without it? He doesn't have to say anything. Wait one second. Rabbi Yirmi Yavam says, no, Ochelos. Afilu Ravasi. Even though Ravasi said before, where did the father's overseas? She's not permitted. Here we say the silence is an indication of approval. Doma ain't Ochelos. Hosem. Ovivimche. Over there. Come back and may protest the chuppah. But here he's remaining silent. So what's the silent, silent indication of? He's in, he's, in, he's in agreement. Therefore, so we're, we're interpreting the silence one of two ways. Is he seething? And that would definitely, it's a disapproval? Or the silence is, is, in, is, is, is interpreted to mean, no, he approves. No body language. No body language. The same, the man is stoic. That that he's remaining silent. Why? It's irrelevant what he says. The silence indication that you approve. Yeah, but here it's a dis no, because here it's a disrespect. It's here the man's. How do you, I'm overseas is one thing. I'm here. How do you get married without asking me whether I approve or don't approve? It's because of the disrespect. He wants his daughter to be fully married, but how do you marry without consulting with him? I'm here.
Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. I mean, we're not talking about a man's Atom Chochem. I mean, that goes into the reality. Why does the other, why does Rabbi Yirmi say, as you were saying, this is the last chance. That's something. So why? That's, that what? He's endorsing it. The other one says, no, he doesn't have to talk. It's such a level of disrespect, I don't have to say anything. Any decent person. It's not simple. The Gemara has a case in, uh, in Bavim on Davov, right before Tuk for Cohen, with a case of a bathhouse, where initially he remains silent, and then, then afterwards he, blow, he explodes. So when he say, did he change his mind? That initially the science was indication of, and they, or no, that that he remained silent because there were other witnesses there, because he relied on them, will to be discussed. Mm-hmm.